So we're going to connect some concepts from leading term analysis from section 3.5 to a factored polynomial so that we can get an idea of what this polynomial looks like without much calculator work. Um, so the first thing I'd like to point out to you, uh, this is a little bit different than our previous polynomials. Um, I would like to point out that it's in factored form. Um, our previous polynomials um, that we've been analyzing have been a, a sum or difference of terms. So the way we would find our degree is slightly different. Um, and to avoid as many computations as possible, um, the idea is we do not want to have to multiply out all these different terms. That would take us a long time, and then there's a more of a chance we make a minor error. So what I prefer to do, if I am finding the degree, I will take the leading term in each of the factors. Um, so what does that mean? is I would start off by, uh, we do have our negative two, that's a monomial factor. But then what I wanna look at is the leading term in this binomial factor. So that leading term would be an X, so I'll highlight there. So that'd be multiplied by just a positive X. Then I look at the leading term in the next binomial. And what happens is you want to pay attention to, if you were to expand this x plus 1 squared out, you would actually have x squared. So I'm going to take that to the power of 2. Um, and um, taking the next leading term, that's just a nice x, we'll get that. And the next leading term. If these had more exponents, we would include the exponents on these values. So all we're doing is multiplying the leading terms of each of the factors together. Um, and then that's going to allow us to find whatever the first term was for our polynomial without having to expand it with all that FOIL and distribution. So if I'm going to multiply this out, and actually I should label this a little bit nicer. I am trying to find the degree, but this, my friends, is really the leading term of the polynomial. So let's, let's compute this. Um, we have negative two. Now what we're doing, whenever you multiply with the same base, you keep the base and add all the exponents. So we should have one plus two plus one plus one. So that ends up being uh, five. So we now have a leading term to make judgments and uh, kind of predict the behavior of our polynomial. So once we understand this, we can say, okay, um, one important part maybe would be to try to talk about endpoint behavior. So basically, now I can get my degree, and my degree is the exponent, which is a five, and that is an odd number. So that's telling me that the endpoint behavior is going to be different for the left and right edges of the graph. Mm -hmm. So remember, we had an idea of um, they're either going to be what, down, up, or up, down. We narrow this down further by paying attention to the leading coefficient. Well, if the leading coefficient um, is equal to negative 2, it's negative. This is going to further narrow down that we will have up-down behavior for the endpoints. So I'll cross out the down-up. So we'll hold this off to the side until we're ready to sketch, but this is a very important part of our polynomial. The next thing I'm going to do is deal with the roots. Um, kind of some, some concepts we've learned from this section is if your polynomial is in factored form, you can quickly find the roots by setting each factor equal to zero. So the next thing I'll look for, I'll go with it this way. Um, I'll kind of set up my roots. Um, I'm looking at x plus two equals zero, x plus one equals zero, x minus one equals zero, and x minus three equals zero. So right away, it's going to give me my roots, um, negative two, 
negative one, positive one, and positive three. Um, now roots are also known as zeros, our x-intercepts. So right now, I can draw a quick sketch of what's happening along the x-axis. So I'll take some time, uh, mark them off a little bit. Um, I'll say um, each tick mark being worth one or so. Trying to be as consistent as possible. And if I'm looking at plotting where negative two would be, uh, an x-intercept, I have this right here. Negative one would be over here. Positive one would be here. And three would be here. So this is where my polynomial is crossing the x-axis. Now we can even deal with this a little bit better by uh, identifying the multiplicities of each of the roots. So if I do this, and maybe I might have to move my drawing over a little bit, I will do that for you all. Take a little bit of time. I'm gonna move this down here a little bit. There we go. Now um, taking account for the multiplicities, um, multiplicities of the roots, um, change that back to the right color. If you look at the corresponding factor for each of your roots, you'll look at the power that it's taken to. So x plus two is taken to the power of one. Its multiplicity is one. X plus one is taken to the power of two. Its multiplicity is two. X minus one is taken to the power of one. Its multiplicity is one. And X minus three is taken to the power of one. Its multiplicity is one. Knowing whether your multiplicity is even or odd is now gonna tell you what is happening um, at the root. So remember, um, with odd multiplicities, um, looking at most of them, one is an odd number. What that tells us is that the graph is tangent, excuse me, not tangent, it crosses. I jumped ahead of myself. So the graph crosses the x-axis at roots that have an odd multiplicity. That's why it's so important to understand this. So what I can do for myself for all these roots, um, so I'm looking at um, negative two. I have an understanding that in some case, it'll either cross going from down to up or up to down. So I kind of write an X for this. At x equals positive one, there's some sort of crossing happening. So I have an x going on because I don't know which way it's coming from quite yet. I'll get there. And at x equals three, there's some sort of crossing. Either it comes um, up to down or down to up and we'll go from figuring this out in a second. The last root, um, which is at negative one, I wanna point out, let um, me see if I can, I will use a slightly different color. I'm running out of colors. I will use orange. Um, I want to pay attention that x equals negative one, you have an even multiplicity. So with an even multiplicity, the graph is tangent to the x-axis at that root. So that root, corresponding root, was negative one. So what I do to sig signify a tangent root, I know that it kind of it barely touches it in one place, so I'm kind of making a U. So it's either looking like an upwards facing U or a downwards facing U. Um, I color code it so I don't get confused because it does kind of look like an X. But what this tells me um, is that now I kind of have an idea of the, the flow of my polynomial. So we are almost set to, to draw. We are going to combine this concept of multiplicity and roots with now leading term analysis.
So remember what I said about the up down part? We now have the direction of how our polynomial is supposed to look. So when we um, are seeing this, we can now say, okay, um, if our polynomial is pointing upwards at the edges, the left edge, then it has to come from the top. So when I sketch my polynomial, it's coming from the top and eventually it has to cross the x-axis at this negative two. Now, the next thing I have to understand is that I have to account for the root at negative one. Um, if the root at negative one is tangent, it somehow has to come back up again and barely touch the x-axis. So I'm using the, the um, downwards facing you to understand this. Now the flow of my polynomial continues. In order for me to cross um, the x-axis at positive one, my polynomial has to curve upwards again and cross through at positive one. And in order for me to now cross the x-axis at x equals three, my polynomial has to curve back downwards again so it crosses. And finally, at the end, it points down. So we have this up and down behavior. And we have a pretty rough sketch of our polynomial. So um, this is a very nice way to analyze your function without having to pull out your TI. Um, I would like to point out that there's really no way at this point for us to determine how um, low our local mins go or how, well, the tangent one we know. But we don't really know if you're not tangent to the x-axis, your local mins and your local maxes could be a lot lower or a lot higher than what you have in your rough sketch. But the main idea is to get a good idea of your function. Um, so I encourage you, if you wanna take a look with me, um, feel free. If you feel good about this, you can stop the video at this point. But I would like to kind of show you how it compares to the actual graph. So one last thing, I'm going to pull up the TI for us. And what I want to do is um, enter the polynomial in my function editor. So I'll remind myself what we were actually looking at. Um, I'm going to enter it in the factored form. No need to multiply anything out. So we have a negative 2 um, gets multiplied by x plus 2, which then gets multiplied by x plus 1 squared. That's x plus 1, which then uh, is taken to the power of 2. So I'm just being real careful. I'm clear on this. Um, we then have x minus 1 times x minus 3. Not net x minus 39, we have x minus 3. There we go. So be careful on that. I press enter. Now, um, what I'd like to do is understand when you made your drawings of your roots, you have a clear idea of how wide to make your x max. So let me zoom everything back to standard just so that you can see what happens. So see, we have a pretty good idea of our, our x min and our x max. And really nice in this sense. Um, we can leave it as negative 10 to positive 10, but you could kind of see um, it, it is sort of matching our function. Um, we may have to, it looks like we are going to have to understand to see some maxes and mins. Uh, it looks like I'm going to have to lower my y max and raise, excuse me, raise my y max and lower my y min. So I'll do that with my window. And like I said, there's no quick way to do it. So sometimes I, I just go crazy uh, to start at maybe negative 50. Um, the idea is you can always shrink it down again. So we graph it and we're almost there. Uh, you'll notice that I think I have to raise my y max a little bit higher. I'll go with 100. And again, it's all experimentation and we have our function. Got a little crazy on the y axis, but I like to kind of show you just a side by side idea. So I'll copy this. And if I can. We'll go back to our actual graph, kind of show you where we're dealing with and see if I can copy that, that graph. We'll see if that works. I'll paste it. There we go. So look at this. 
So we can now kind of see um, our comparison of our graph. We'll move it a little bit so you can kind of look at a side by side. But check it out. It looks like we're pretty darn accurate without needing a TI. So super valuable. Uh, again, you'll see um, that I already addressed this, but you kind of have, um, when you're making these rough sketches, you'll notice that your, your mins and your maxes, if they're not tangent to the x-axis, um, there's no way of knowing how high or high, how low, but see how, how, how nice that is. Just take a moment to admire that and appreciate the mathematics behind this without even needing to pull out the calculator. Now, I always encourage you, if you're doing these problems, you can use your TI to check. However, sometimes the degree is so high, um, it ends up warping the, the view screen of your TI. So knowing these concepts and connecting 3.5 uh, with 3.6 is definitely going to help you with a lot of these problems. I hope this helps. I'll see you for the next example.